I'm Victor Morberg, um, Transport Education and Training Authority, and for those of you that don't know what CETA does, essentially you're involved in the skills um, framework, we're looking at quality assurance, we're looking at, um, at, at uh, enabling people with skills in our respective sectors that we're operating in, and we've got various delivery mechanisms um, available to us to, to operate. Um, so don't you thank you for your, your history lesson, enlightening, and extremely, extremely honest. Um, I, 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 th I think you've, you've highlighted certain things that, 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 that Peter, I know you tried to offset them to some extent, um, but I think they're very, very relevant nonetheless. And, you know, as you were talking, I just thought perhaps we should be integrating immediately straight off bat into maritime studies, things like interpersonal skills, social skills, communication skills, teamwork, critical thinking, parallel um, uh, problem solving, and so on, into the, uh, the maritime curricula. Um, I've been in skills development for about uh, 18 years now, um, and I have seen, since I started in the maritime sector, um, training births, lack of them, was an issue. Um, unfortunately, what I have just seen is a, is a further decline. We're, a lot of what we do is, is award funding grants. Um, in, in the past, we did quite a lot to cadetships and to ratings. It really has tapered off a lot over the years. Um, in part because SAIMI um, run the National Cadet Project. Um, it has got a lot to do with it. But I'm seeing, other than the, the fishing sector, um, I'm seeing very little activity um, uh, from a grant perspective um, in terms of, of um, seafarer training. Unlike most of the other speakers, our, our focus isn't, and my focus isn't going to be purely um, seafarer training. Um, we do, uh, we're involved with a lot of the shore based as well, and we run across the fishing sector as well as what, what is left of the merchant marine. <coughs> You know, in the light of, um, of the lack of births, I think yeah, we do need to align much closer to what industry requires. And the example just given to us by Clavinus is, um, is, is a wonderful one and, and something that, 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 that we should aspire to more. Um, and it, it's looking at what, what uh, yes, I think it's also possibly um, a social thing on their side, but still it's, it's about what their requirements are and we need to align ourselves to that. But with all of that said, I think, you know, now we've been in oper uh, Operation Pekisa for a couple of years, and I do think we need to sort of start showing a couple of um, easy wins or quick wins as well. And I, what I have been noticing quite a few of, uh, of late is, is um, project proposals from the from training providers looking at the cruise industry, and that's an exciting one because it's it's the the duration of, of training is far far shorter. It's a far less costly overall. Um, there's a large pool to 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 select from, and we're looking at people that have been trained in tourism, hospitality, uh, fitness, health, entertainment, so on and so forth, bringing in bringing in through. It, it seems to be a budding or growing market rather. Um, South Africa seems to have a, a, a good reputation in terms of being a source or pool for people to, 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 to be uh, recruited from. We've, we have dabbled a bit now. We've, we had one uh, project, smaller project approved, and I've got a few more um, that, are, that I'm working through, trying to get them through the system as well. But we've had good results with that one. Um, I think, I think um, recruitment out of the small pool that we, we uh, worked with is about 95% or so. Uh, we, we're not alone, I think other agencies have also given some, to, some support to, to um, training for the cruise industry, but I do believe it's one we should punt further um, uh, nationally, and maybe we should just look at a new model in terms of how to actually um, implement uh, uh, programs so that we can put higher numbers going through and, and look at recruitment from South Africa. <clears throat> in, in your discussions, um, Subantu, um, you did make me just 
kind of think through the, the pipeline a, a, a little bit. Um, I know that there are significant challenges, um, but perhaps we need to also start going back and looking a bit younger um, at, at the, the kids. You know, programs which, which will look at things like water familiarization, um, the sea cadets programs, um, further support to, to them and building them, trying to build this, this pool of talent that, the, that one day when you get this maritime industry right, and, and, and the dream, I still believe in, and I'm with uh, Sabanti totally on this, I, and, and I was very pleased to hear Andrew say the same as well. Um, you know, we do believe that we can create a, a maritime nation. But, you know, start developing that, that pipeline a bit further. Um, the schools, the maritime schools, very, I think we need to there be very careful, very selective. We've got the obvious role model down in uh, Law Hill in, in Simonstown. Um, perhaps one or two more, but very, very strategically uh, uh, sought after and supported it as well. Um, and, and the sailed academies. Um, that's also been in, an interesting and, and a bit of a new trend coming through as well. So those, and uh, Therese actually made reference to it as well, that it's, it's those institutions that have got maritime studies, give them practical skills. You can do that in, 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 in the ports, um, you can give them saving skills, and, and they get a lot, I believe, um, to, 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 to work with in terms of gearing themselves or readying themselves towards a, a life at sea. <clears throat> um, in looking at the, the, the conference notes, quite a lot of attention was given to, to, to T rates. Um, and, and they do, they have for a long time now sort of stood on the periphery of, of maritime training. They typically sort of underutilized, uh, undercapitalized in terms of their goal, which is to would then be providing skilled workers to the maritime sector. So they haven't been actively involved. Um, there has been recent developments with Umfalozi, and they have taken themselves a good step forward. We had conducted a study on, on the seven TVETs that were originally identified back in 2014 or so. Um, to, to get involved in maritime studies, looking at their capacity and readiness to, to, um, to implement mar maritime studies. Um, there are a whole set of recommendations that have come through there. Essentially, I don't want to unpack the detail of it, but essentially two things that stand out is one, uh, uh, significant, significant government support um, needed for, for the, for the TVETs, and secondly, um, the establishment of private partners, of uh, private public partnerships. Um, there, there are a lot of issues that have to be worked through. We have had, um, and I'm talking Tita in my own chamber, um, we have had quite a lot of success with colleges in the oil and gas sector. Um, and there too, we've, we've probably put through now since 2014 about just over 200 um, artisans that are, are being uh, recruited into the um, oil and gas sector. Uh, roughly 80% of them have, have finalized the program, they've got the red seal, and about, of that number, about 85% of them have made it into the industry, they've got jobs. The one new trend in, um, with uh, the TVET environment is the so-called Centre of Specialization. We were invited by uh, the Department of Education training to not specifically our field but to uh, participate in the program uh, the, the COS program central specialization they've identified to identify 13 uh, um, arts and skill areas and we took the one fitter and turner and we're working with Northland at the moment it's a very structured workplace and and um, classroom environment. Um, learners go six months to college, six months um, uh, into, into the, the workplace. We also got employers up front um, and it really is working well um, and it's something that I think we could possibly consider in the maritime environment as well. I'm not quite sure which, which, which skill areas. I was thinking maybe 
in the engineering kind of disciplines, motormen or electric technical uh, ratings, those kind of things. I'm not quite sure where, but those discussions would have to be had. The last point I want to make for today is we had heard from the presidency but earlier, and they had mentioned that we were rather slow on delivery in some, some of the field. Um, uh, Maritime shipping being one of the, um, one of them. Um, I think if we could put it back, you know, I, for me, as I'm seeing it, I'm involved in, in Operation Kisa, and it concerns me that there is no specific mandate that's given out that we we host these. We have these quarterly meetings that really turn into. To talk shops, and then at the next meeting, people that were supposed to have done something and done it, or they there, and things like that. I think if government is serious about Operation Pakita, government needs to put more um, serious structures in place in terms of giving us mandates and and resources to, to do the job. Um, and the second issue I have when I sit on um, Operation Pukisa, my question always is, what is the industry? They're not there. They're not there. It's, it's, it's the public sector, but not, not, not industry itself. Um, I want to apologize at the front, because I have a flight to catch at a meeting in Cape Town, and I need to leave. So I can't stay for the remainder of the session. So I want to say I'm going to apologize and use the opportunity to do the same time. So thank you. <clears throat>